Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit four, lesson three. Okay, our first problem here in this hanger, the weight of the triangle is X, the weight of the square is Y. Write an equation using X and Y to represent the hanger. So, triangle is X, so that's x, that's x, that's x, that's x, that's x. The weight of a square is y. y, 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 y. Write an equation, so we're gonna need an equal sign, to represent the hanger. What have we got on the left side of this hanger? We have an x, and we have three y's, so x plus three y. What about the other side of our hanger? What have we got? We have four x's and one y. Four x plus y. Okay, if x is six, what is y? Well, if x is six, We could plug it right into this equation, or let's simplify the equation a little bit first. If I look at this, we've got 1x over here, we've got 4x's over there. I can cancel out this x, and it would cancel out one of the x's on the other side. So then 3y equals 3x plus y. Well, now I can kind of do the same thing. I can cancel out this 1y, which would cancel out one of the y's on the other side. So that would be 2y equals 3x. If x is 6, what is y? Well, 2y equals 3 times whatever x is, but we were told x is 6. 3 times 6 is 18 equals 2y. Well, what's y? If I divide that by 2 and divide that by 2, y equals 9. Andre and Diego were each trying to solve 2x plus 6 equals 3x minus 8. Describe the first step they each make to the equation. Okay, the first one here, we have 2x plus 6 equals 3x minus 8. And then after Andre's first step, negative x equals 6 minus 8. Well, what did we do? The 6 didn't change. The minus 8 didn't change. So it was something to do with the x's. And now there's no x's on the right side. What would we have to do to get rid of x's on the right side? We'd have to take them away. So if we subtract 3x from this side, we'd have to do the same thing to the other side. Those would cancel on the right, and we would be left with 2x subtract 3x, which is negative 1x, plus 6 equals negative 8. So what was Andre's first step? He subtracted 3x from each side. He subtracted 3x from both sides of that equation. Now, the result of Diego's first step was 6 equals x subtract 8. So what did Diego do? Diego got rid of the x's on the left, so they're gone. Let me erase what we had from the first one here. Use a different color for Diego. He got rid of these two x. How do we get rid of 2x? We just take it away. We subtract it. If we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. 2x subtract 2x. Well, that would cancel. 3x subtract 2x is x. So he subtracted 2x from each side. 
totally just spelled the word side wrong. Let's move on before we talk about that. Complete the table with values for X or Y that make this equation true. Okay, 3X plus Y equals 15. If X is 2, we put in a 2 there. 3 times 2 is 6, plus Y equals 15. 6 plus what is equal to 15? 6 plus 9 is 15, so Y has to be 9. Okay, the next one, y is 3. If y is 3, what would I have to do to get the x by itself? 3 times something plus 3 is 15. Subtract 3 from this side, subtract 3 from that side. 3x equals 15, subtract 3 is 12. If 3x is 12, x, divide each side by 3, x is 12 divided by 3, which is 4. Okay, now we have x equals 6. If x is 6, 3 times 6 is 18, plus y equals 15. 18 plus what is 15? What's well, negative 3? 18 minus 3 is 15. Now a 0 for x. 3 times 0 is 0. That goes away. y equals 15. Now we have an x value of 3. 3 times 3 is 9, plus y equals 15. So y is 9 plus what is 15? That's 6. Now we've got a y value of 0. If y is 0, 3x plus something is 15. Or 3x plus 0 is 15. So that means just 3x equals 15. Divide each side by 3. X is equal to 5. Now, last one, we have a Y value of 8. If Y is 8, 3X plus 8 is 15. And subtract 8 from each side. 3X equals 15 subtract 8 is 7. Divide each side by 3. X equals 7 thirds. Okay, we filled in the table. Now it says create a graph, plot these points, and find the slope of the line that goes through them. So what do I want this graph to look like? Sorry, that's going to get kind of tiny to fit everything on here. But that's x. That's y. My y looks kind of lousy. x and y. What do we want for x values? Looks like our lowest one's 0. We go up to like 6. I can probably just count by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now what about y? Ooh, maybe I should have not had this be my axis. I should have had the axis a little higher on the graph. But I'll just leave it as it is. We should be just fine. Now what have we got? We have x values of 9, 3, 15. Looks like the biggest one is 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That graph doesn't go high enough if I count by 1, so I'm going to count by 2s. OK, 
Okay, now what points do we have on this graph? Well, we know 0, 15. 0, 15 is a nice, easy point to put on the graph. We know 5, 0 is on the graph. What else have we got? We got 3, 4. We've got 2, 9. We've got... Wait just a second. Th three, four is not on there. Three, six is on the graph. Oopsie. Three goes with six. Um, four goes with three. So if I draw out this line, create a graph, plot the points, find the slope of the line. So to find the slope, rise over run, draw a triangle. I'm just going to use the full triangle that's on this graph. Zoom in a little bit so we can see better because that got kind of tiny to fit the table and the graph. But if I look at this full triangle, I have a rise of 15. I have a run of 5. And if I look at this left to right, as I read, it's going down. My slope will be negative. Rise of 15 over run of 5. Negative 15 over 5 is negative 3. Slope is negative 3. Match each set of equations with the move that turned the first equation into the second equation. So what did we do with A? Nothing happened with the numbers, but something happened with the x's. What happened with the x's? Well, this side on the left, the x's went down. On the right, they went away, so it looks like 4x was taken away from each side. So that would be adding negative 4x to each side, because adding a negative is the same as taking away a positive. So 4 is A. B. The 5x minus 7 that was in the parentheses is still there, what happened? This negative 4 seems to have gone away. How about on this side? Negative 18 turned into positive 4.5. So it looks to me like we did some division because this was 4 times that stuff and it went away. How do we get rid of multiplying by 4? We divide by 4. I don't see a division over there, so dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. And the negative sign went away, so we must have canceled that out. So we must have multiplied by negative 1 fourth. So that's that one. which is B. Okay, next what happened? Looking at this one, looking at C, negative 10x stayed negative 10x, 5x stayed 5x, so we must have done something to the constants, the just numbers. 8 turned into 4 and 7 turned into 3, so that seems to me like we just subtracted 4 from each side which would be this. Adding negative 4 is the same as subtracting 4. So that is C. That one's already been done. Now what did we do here? Ooh, D looks like we were dividing by 4 and that went away. How do we undo 
How do we undo this dividing by 4? What's the opposite of dividing by 4? It's multiplying by 4. Now I also notice that that negative sign right there went away. So we must have multiplied by negative 4. Let's look at the other side of the equation. What happens to 4 to turn it into negative 16? Well, that's also multiplied by negative 4. Multiply by negative 4. D. Th e, we got 12x turned into 3x, 4 turned into 1. 20x turned into 5x, and 24 turned into 6. So we did something to the x terms and the number terms. Looks like the only choice left is multiply each side by 1 fourth, which is dividing by 4, right? Well, what's 12x times 1 fourth? That's 3x. What's 4 times 1 fourth? Well, that's 1. 20x times 1 fourth is 5x. 1 fourth of 24 is 6. So they multiplied the whole equation by 1 fourth. They multiplied each side of the equation by one fourth. So three goes with E. Excellent. Okay, what's next? Do we have another problem? Yes, we do. And the next one's the last one. Select all the situations for which only zero or positive solutions make sense. Okay, measuring temperature in degrees Celsius at an Arctic outpost each day in January. If we are measuring temperature in Celsius at an Arctic outpost, look at zero Celsius is freezing. So if we're at an Arctic outpost in January, it's probably going to be below freezing. That doesn't make sense to only be positive. The height of a candle as it burns over an hour. Okay. Height of a candle as it burns over an hour is... Does it make sense for a candle to have a negative height? I've never seen a candle with a negative height. That doesn't work. C, elevation above sea level of a hiker descending into a canyon. Elevation above sea level of a hiker descending into a canyon. Is a hiker going into a canyon going to get below sea level? Hiker going into a canyon below sea level, well, is he bringing snorkel gear? Ooh. So that one, I X'd both of those. Both of those work. They make sense to only have zero or positive solutions. Number of students remaining in school after 6 p.m. Will the number of students in a school ever be negative? That would be kind of weird. Bank account balance over a year. Should your bank account ever have a negative amount in the bank? No. So that works. Ooh, D also works. Number of students is always going to be zero or positive. Number of degrees Fahrenheit of an oven used on a hot summer day. Will the temperature in an oven ever be negative? No. So it looks like just A doesn't work. Candle as it burns can't get a negative height. Hiker can't get below sea level. Students in school is neg never a negative number. Bank account balance isn't a negative number. Temperature in an oven on a hot summer day is never a negative number. So B, C, D, E, and F all work. That's another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Maths. See you next time.